Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about STL or the Standard Template Libraries. If you're a C++ developer, you probably already know what this is all about. If you're not a C++ developer, well let's put it this way, when C++ shipped, it didn't have templates or it was earlier on, uh, they got template supports. Templates can be thought of kind of like the combination between a generic and a macro. What it allows you to do is write reusable code that doesn't really care about the type that you send into it. And the STL itself is a set of common classes is for C++, I'm going to take this directly from the Wikipedia entry for STL, but STL provides a set of common classes for C++ such as containers and associative arrays that can be used with any built-in type and with any user-defined type that supports some elementary operation such as copying and assignment. STL algorithms are independent of containers, which significantly reduces the complexity of the library. So it's basically built, it's um, four different components in STL, algorithms, containers, functions, and iterators. The kind of stuff that is implemented using the, the STL libraries, you can see down below. So we got various different containers like pairs, vectors, lists, S lists, queues, priority queue stack. If you're working with a higher level language like um, C Sharp or Java, well, they have much more robust built-in class libraries where a lot of that stuff was actually provided in C++ using templates and then the standard set of templated code, which was standardized as part of the C standards. You see over here, the C standard libraries is composed of, you know, various different things. The C libraries that inherited the SDL libraries and miscellaneous other headers, so stuff there. But this is all the stuff that STL does. You've also got things like iterators, algorithms that work across all these things, and then functions as well. Uh, there are a variety of different implementations out there. And if you actually work in game development, chances are you might actually have been banned from using STL. So in fact, that actually led to uh, Electronic Arts creating their own version. You can see it linked to right down here. It's actually open source of EASTL or the EA Standard Template Libraries. And those kind of are performance oriented. So you've got more consistency and consistent performance from what you can expect. So you can use them in more real time game type things. But as you can see, there are a number of different implementations out there. The original one by HP back in 1994. SGL implemented a version, uh, they, and they released that to the public first, I thought, actually. Uh, Lib standard C++ from GNU, LLVM have implemented one of their own. And Dinkum incremented one. Uh, Microsoft licensed Dinkum and then created their own Apache C++ standard template libraries. And as mentioned earlier on, EA standard template libraries. So you have a number of different people implementing these different libraries. Now, why are we talking about all of this? Well, right now, something called CppCon is going on, and... Da, da 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 Microsoft is open sourcing Microsoft Visual C's STL. So the STL that is used and shipped with Microsoft Visual Studio, the most current version, is now going to be developed and available completely in the public, uh, hosted on GitHub, as we will see in just a second. Um, all of the code is out there, and we got a couple of questions and answers kind of format going on here. Why are you doing this? There are several reasons. Working on the STL and GitHub will allow our customers to follow our development as it happens, try out the latest changes, and help improve our pull requests by reviewing them. As C++ standardization accelerates, with more large features being voted in every year, we believe that accepting major features as open source contrib contributions will be important. For example, C++'s um, 20s chrono and format libraries are potential candidates. We also want to contribute back to the C++ community by making it possible to take our implementation of major features, for example, C++ 17's charconf. Uh, what license are you using? This is under the Apache license v2.0 with LLVM exceptions. Um, that's uh, basically as permissive as they get. Uh, to be clear, Microsoft Visual C's STL isn't merging with libc++. There's still distinct libraries that will support different platforms with different data structure representations. However, if libc++ maintainers are interested in taking features directly from MSVC's STL or in collaborating on development of new features in both libraries simultaneously, we'll be able to help without having to worry about licensing. So basically, they're going to stay a separate product from other STL implementations, but other STL implementations are perfectly within their rights to just take chunks as they wish. It should make compatibility across different uh, different implementations a bit better. And this is a license that is not going to get in the way, which is pretty nice. Um, 
As a customer of MSVC STL, you may be wondering whether this new license creates obligations for you. This is kind of like that whole um, GPL, LGPL, somewhat, some people call them infective licenses. Uh, in the case of the Apache license, the, the answer is pretty much going to be no. Uh, so there is, you aren't required to provide attribution when shipping your compiled product to end user. You don't have to contribute any of the code you've done. There's no linking requirements, nothing else. Like I said, the Apache license is pretty straightforward and nice. It's also, they're acknowledging that they are built on top of the boost standard license for some of their own code. Uh, and are you going to open source anything else from the MSVC tool set? And the answer is pretty much right now, no. Um, so that's about it. And then finally, is there some catch? And a fairly small one, we're going to spend some time overhauling our build system, test infrastructure, and issue tracking, which will delay some work on C++ 20 library features. We just finished implementing all the C++ 17 library features, so this shouldn't be too problematic. This will allow us to work on STL more effect, um, efficiently or effective efficiently, sorry, and ultimately reach C++ 20 completeness faster. Uh, again, they were originally licensed off of Dinkumware in the first place, so it looks like Dinkumware has given them in, uh, permission to go ahead with this process. And as mentioned earlier on, the library is up on, the code is all there, Microsoft forward slash STL libraries. It's all in here. Basically, documentation is there. The STL implementations are in here. Um, so if you really want to jump into the C++ source code for the STL libraries, they are here. And if there's one thing I have found from my own personal experience, trying to read C++ templated code is not generally fun. Uh, so if you want to uh, jump in there, it is nice to see that this is out there. It, it should make, um, I don't know, it, maybe the, the world will get along a little bit better, or maybe this means absolutely nothing. Uh, I'd be interested to see how this works out. If you're interested in getting started, there is a bit more documentation here. And of course, I will toss all of the links down below to both the um, original announcement and the, uh, the instructions here on how to go ahead and build this stuff uh, from the uh, command line, how to go ahead and use it. Uh, yeah, interesting. It's definitely an interesting move. It's nice to see that it's under a nice license. It's nice to see Microsoft getting more involved, more involved, more and more involved in open source projects. I, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of people that are still wary about if they're real about open source, but it certainly seems like they are. So let me know what you think about this in general, what you think of C++ and the STL libraries. Personally, I find coding with them frustrating. I've always found, I like C++ and until templates were added to the language, and I understand the utility they offer, but when it comes to dealing with generics, I would much rather work in a C Sharp than C++ personally. It just always felt like a bit of a hack and trying to debug the error warnings and the messages and the warnings and oh, smash your head off the ground. Uh, you know, auto made a lot of this a lot nicer to work with the auto keyword. Uh, instead of having to like, type out long form template types, but I still find the experience somewhat frustrating on the whole, but that's that's got nothing to do with what Microsoft has done here. It's cool to see. I don't know if there are any advantages I'm not thinking of here, if you can come up with some. I also love to hear those comments down below. Anyways, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.